This is Coaching Club TV and welcome to the first of a four-part series on emotional intelligence. Why it is, what it is and how do we as coaches use it to improve both the personal and professional lives of our clients. It's a very, very important part of what we do and fortunately the idea of emotional intelligence has not only been around for quite some time but it is an intense area of study from both psychologists and neuroscience, neuroanatomists, social neuroscientists, a whole group of people are making it so much easier for us to help you in this particular area of our lives. Today we know that emotional intelligence is so much more than just identifying and managing emotions. We know that it is about using an emotion at the right place, in the right time, with the right person, to the right degree, for the right effect. It's so much more complicated than simply not getting angry or checking in with your emotions. And this is what we're going to talk about in this four-part series. Today we're going to talk about what is an emotion. We can't really be intelligent about something unless we understand it. So we'll do a little bit of a deep dive into the brain and understand what we know to date about where emotions come from, which I will warn you is not a heck of a lot. But it is enough for us to start understanding how we generate emotions and how they play out in our thinking and our reactions. If we look at Paul McLean's idea of the triune brain, which tells us that there are three major functional areas in the brain that do different things. Right here at the bottom, we have the prehistoric brain, the dinosaur brain. And this really takes care of monitoring functions. Are we too hot, too cold? Is our blood glucose level suitable? These are things we don't really think about, but they have to happen. So we have an area of brain that we share with reptiles. Above that, sitting over that, we have the limbic system. Now the limbic system encompasses many, many different parts of the brain. But at this stage, we think that the limbic system is the seat of our emotional language and our social understanding and language, as well as emotional and social memory. So this is a very important part of the brain that we're going to be talking about quite a bit as we go through this video series. Sitting over and above that, we have the neocortex. Now, the neocortex, in evolutionary terms, was the last part of the brain to develop, the most sophisticated part of the brain, but also the slowest part of the brain, whereas the limbic system is incredibly fast. So emotional intelligence is, at this stage, about getting the prefrontal cortex, this, this bit here, the bit that we think with, that we make calculations with, that we problem solve with. This is where language sits as well. To get that part of the brain and the limbic system to communicate, to be intelligent about our emotions. In order to do that, we really have to understand what emotions are. So let's have a little look at that. Every emotion that we experience, now we can talk about emotion versus feeling, but we just don't have time for that right now in the video. But let's just call them emotions. Now, when we think of emotions, we think of happiness or sadness, the, the big ones that we can easily identify on somebody. In fact, there are seven base emotions or primary emotions, and each one of these has their own molecular signature. They have their own neurotransmitters that are generated in the brain, their own hormones. And these hormones then send a signal down through the spinal cord to tell our body how to react. So, First of all, we receive an input. Something happens in our environment. When that something happens in our environment, we think about it, we process it at a cognitive level. Once we've had this thought, the chemical composition in our body has changed, we then have signals to our limbs, to our heart, to the sweat on our palms. We have these signals that tell our body how to respond to this particular input. And that is very briefly what we understand right now emotions to be. And each one of these different molecular signatures or chemical cocktails actually affects our thinking differently and affects our decision making differently. I know you have had a period of time in your life when something's happened and you've said something that later you completely regret. And you may have thought, what was I thinking? When I said that, truth is you may not have actually been thinking. That signal may not have had time to go into the prefrontal cortex for you to think about it. You may simply have responded 
with the limbic system, with the emotional part of the brain. It's called an amygdala hijack. When you do something without thinking about it, it happens to everyone. Emotional intelligence, however, gives us the tools to recognize when those situations are creeping up on you or when you're in the middle of them and how to short circuit your cognitive circuitry in order to respond better and make better decisions, especially under circumstances of stress. Stress is a hormone. Stress is an emotion. Never forget that. And we need to treat it like every other emotion. Now that you know a little bit about what an emotion is and how it's generated, we're going to move on and talk about the five areas of emotional intelligence as defined by Daniel Goleman. And that is self-awareness, self-management, self-motivation, empathy, and social skills.